Okay, very good morning. It's Friday 22nd of May. I'm Anthony Chung, the Head of Market Analysis here at Amplify Trading. A uh, quick word before I begin. Uh, it is the final day of our current professional trader program. So we've had a group of nine guys with us for the last five weeks, fully remote, online from really around the world, different places. And it's their last day today. And out of the nine, I'm pleased to say uh, six are looking likely to get backed by Amplify to continue trading with us. Uh, so yeah, amazing job by the team. Um, is the number always that high? Um, it moves around. I'd say that is a really good result to see that many people coming through and, and really being quite effective. Con considering you know how how quite difficult markets have been from a from a judgment point of view. Uh, so testament to them and to their mentors and, and well done uh, for the final day. Um, also as well on the YouTube channel don't forget to to subscribe we've got new videos coming over the weekend of course so normal routine you get me during the week uh, and then you get Eddie who does like a, a deep dive into some macro topics that will come out on Saturday he's got a video talking about the Fed and QE and how are they going to run into trouble with that what is yield curve control these types of subjects uh, and then Sam of course if I just look down here he did the first of what's going to be many every Sunday He's going to do his weekly trading setups, looking much more on the technical side. Uh, and yeah, really well received last week. So long may that continue. Uh, so as I said, subscribe, hit that notification bell on the right hand side and you'll get all the alerts when things go live. So thanks for listening to that. And let's get stuck into the actual markets and what's happening this morning. And certainly a little bit of risk off um, tone to proceedings and this coming after a real focus not so much this time on the coronavirus actually on the continuation of the US uh, and China relationship just deteriorating further uh, we had the China National People's Congress the NPC overnight and that was something that the markets were eagerly awaiting uh, and there's been a couple of interesting developments there and a mission of um, putting out a GDP target somewhat symbolic that really hasn't happened uh, for many decades in terms of their usual practice of setting a numerical target. Remember what I was talking yesterday about a specific figure for GDP and that gives markets confidence then about the types of policies that they're likely to see uh, and to what extent. But the fact that they haven't done that is making people a little bit nervous uh, and then, as I said, you've got confrontation. There's a Beijing passing a new bill, basically, in regards to, as we've seen here, um, it's impacting Hong Kong uh, and a few other things I can run through. Um, but looking at the charts, firstly, um, given what I've just mentioned, um, index futures are lower. Um, overnight, I'll show you the chart shortly, but the Hong Kong Hang Seng Index underperformed down around 5%, a little bit more modest in, in places geographically like Japan and Australia, but still negative. Uh, and looking at the US futures this morning, we are down about 15, 16 points in the S&P, and we're down about 132 below the S2 already in the futures in the DAX. Uh, so a little bit of uh, kind of a more classical movement from a correlations point of view. Uh, from a currency perspective, uh, the dollar having a bit of a bounce back. Uh, so up about two tenths, so just imparting a moderate degree of pressure. But if you look at the major pairs, definitely a dollar inspired move. Uh, Euro dollar and cable both down around 27, 28 pips here in the, the, the top left corner. Um, cable not really flustered at all by the GFK consumer confidence reading overnight, showing British consumer confidence down the lowest point it's been since the depths of the financial crisis you know, over a decade ago. Um, the flight to quality bid just helping support gold prices looking to reverse course of some of the loss that was seen in yesterday afternoon session london time uh, and t-notes up about seven ticks just closing in finding some near-term resistance uh, trading a tick below the r2 in the daily pivots uh, also oil underperforming um, i'll get to that in a moment uh, but again tied to just generally the reaction to what's happened in the developments overnight and the announcements coming out of china so let's get straight into the news. Uh, stocks drop as China or Hong Kong shares lead fall in Asia. Um, China moves to impose Hong Kong security law as concerns grow. Well, 
let's take this step by step. The first thing here is you have the National People's Congress, and this is a real staging post for the Chinese economy in terms of they set out then the course of action that they foresee for the next period ahead. And as I said, one of the uh, unusual things that they've done is they've broken their usual practice of setting a numerical target for economic growth. Now, got a, uh, a quick snippet here from the latest Goldman's note that came out overnight. And they mentioned two things. On the GDP front, they say by not issuing one for 2020, those arguing for a target believe that by not setting one, that may weaken market confidence in further policy support mechanisms, essentially. You know, by, by defining, say, a level that they typically put relatively optimistic, it kind of shows that they're willing to spend fiscally in order to achieve that target. By not doing so creates uncertainty, and uncertainty in market terms generally in the short term creates negativity in terms of price. Uh, the second thing that they um, said, Goldman's, was that a special national bond quota was set at 1 trillion RMB, about 1% of GDP, uh, and this was the big disappointment for them. They said that market expectations were more toward two trillion or more based on some of the discussions that they were having with some of their clients and, and contacts and so on. So about half the size. So you know, like what we're seeing with many other countries, of course, lots of bond issuance. They've got to finance these you know, huge fiscal spending packages that are happening. Uh, in various different countries at the moment. But China coming out with a smaller size and perhaps not that certain about their economic growth potential over the next uh, period ahead for, for the rest of this year uh, has created a bit of nervousness in the market this morning. Um, what else has been going on? Well, this is the other thing. Uh, Beijing is using legislative sessions to pass a bill establishing an enforcement mechanism for ensuring national security for Hong Kong. Setting up a potential showdown, of course, with Trump. It's been kind of simmering this week. It certainly has escalated over the, the last five days or so. Um, and Trump, who's come under pressure, of course, in Washington to reconsider um, you know, the, the next course of action. Uh, the announcement on national security legislation has prompted then calls, as per this headline, for activists to start new protests against this security law. And if you remember, you know, before the pandemic, this was going on for months in Hong Kong. Uh, and so could this be reignited this weekend? Uh, again, for me personally, any friends and family um, in Hong Kong, please do take care as ever. Um, but unfortunately, this is probably going to lead to some kind of backlash, whether this weekend or in the coming days and weeks. Uh, but just goes to show that you know it's far from over here and there are many facets to this trade war that need monitoring. Uh, so the Hang Seng was down heavily overnight. It did underperform. Um, this is looking, here is the session that you had from yesterday's close to reopening and it's just one-way traffic pretty much to where we trade at the moment. As you can see, it's still uh, down about 5% for the time being. Um, the other thing in response to this then, and what is helping kind of further add fuel to the fire, is two US senators are proposing legislation to punish Chinese entities involved in enforcing proposed new security laws in Hong Kong. And the law there that's being proposed would penalise banks that do business with these entities. Um, bipartisan plan is one of the several at the moment targeting China in Congress. So as, as well as Trump... Uh, kind of having a war of words. There are actual bills here of a tangible nature that are being implemented or aiming to be. Um, and you've had that whole you know, attempt to try and delist a number of Chinese companies on US exchanges. China have come out and said, fine, we'll, pu we'll pull some of these big names like uh, Baidu, for example. So yeah, there's a, quite a few things to, to monitor here. And on that front, uh, five flashpoints to watch. I did retweet this article on Bloomberg if you want to have more of a thorough read uh, from the Amplified Trading Twitter account. Uh, but basically, they, they break it down into to five distinguishable points that you need to monitor when it comes to um, the kind of news flow pertaining to the, the, the spots of interest that could move markets. And these would be trade, Taiwan and Hong Kong on this whole kind of sovereignty and one China policy issue uh, and how forcibly or not do they try to go after that. Technology, of course, like we've seen with Huawei 
the coronavirus uh, and financial ties. Um, the US turbocharging its efforts um, is what one official said to reduce the reliance on its supply chains on China. Uh, and that is something similar to what we've heard from the UK Prime Minister, um, Boris Johnson in the Times this morning, uh, ordering plans to end reliance on Chinese imports. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it is interesting. It's, it's kind of a more tactile, but, but strategically the same, um, Boris looking to align in a way that really kind of um, places China at the epicenter, particularly with the coronavirus, which is having such a devastating impact on not just the UK, but the global economy. And so it is strategically from political point of view, good to frame China as the, the kind of reason or the originator of that. Uh, and yeah, definitely less confrontational and vocal than, than the way Trump's doing things, but certainly follows a similar thing. And this has got Dominic Cummings written all over it because this plan to kind of reduce reliance on China for things like vital medical supplies, other strategic imports, uh, they're calling this Project Defend. You know, that couldn't be more, more politically driven. It's kind of like take back control and these kind of very... Um, you know, kind of wordplay to in invoke a certain kind of type of public reception to these types of movements. So, yeah, certainly this is um, a strategy that's being deployed. Uh, but yeah, as per those five reasons, they're the kind of five things I'd look out for: trade, uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, technology, coronavirus, and financial ties. <laughs> Despite all of this, though, um, and everything that's being said and China warning that it will safeguard its sovereignty, its security, its interests, and it has threatened countermeasures, they've also said, we will continue to pledge to implement the US trade deal amid these rising tensions. So, yeah, it's kind of a, a bit of an odd one at the moment. Uh, it's a relationship uh, out of necessity, if anything. You know, we're talking about two of the world's superpowers, and they're so intertwined, particularly on the... Um, the area of trade that it's very hard to see what Trump had threatened earlier in the week that he could simply walk away. I think that's just pure nonsense personally. Uh, but that doesn't mean that markets cannot um, or are not susceptible to potential pullbacks here on escalation. And that certainly is what we've seen uh, encapsulated on today. It's kind of been building up and then the crescendo coming almost um, here in the in today's session. So when I'm looking at the charts this morning, one thing I am thinking is, you know, look, we've had, we're going into the um, the weekend. You know, I would say it's probably unlikely that anyone's going to want to hold positions over the weekend, just given the the associated risk of a further development that would be akin to further escalation on this issue. Uh, and so, you know, do you get a lot of people just closing out some of these shorter term positions? Uh, and would that impart a little bit of a further run in this movement that we're seeing um, at the open this morning? Potentially, uh, could be something to look at. And in that scenario, perhaps a bit more weight coming into the equity market, fueling just general support then for um, fixed income futures, gold. I mean, if you're looking at the S&P here, just quickly, we're just having a retest down uh, at what would have been, what, Tuesday late evening going into the Wednesday Asia Pacific session. Found a bit of support and a bounce there at around lining up with the S2 in the futures. Uh, but yeah, if we were, if we get heavy and we start retesting down there, um, when the US starts coming later and perhaps even toward the end of the US Wall Street session, then it would be targeting probably around here uh, and then at around these levels would be interim target. So if I just make that a bit bigger, put some ellipses. So uh, you got that high here, you got the respective resistance and support points that were seen. Uh, that's actually Monday session. And then you've got that, that low as well for Monday session, which was the high going back to the previous week on the 13th. So there would be some potential downside targets. The market definitely, um, if it were to come under some considerable pressure, could see a, a pretty decent move today. Uh, if the US come in, they really buy into this notion of uh, of clear escalation on that US-China trade side. Okay, what else is there? Well, you know, one of the other things here is that crude oil 
on track still, despite the sell-off for its fourth straight weekly gain. But, you know, there's a couple of things to bear in mind here. You know, it's very rare for a market to go up and up and up. And as you can see, the gains have got um, smaller over the course of the last two weeks from where we were. The other thing, of course, in the crude market is, you know, do not forget that China is the world's biggest importer of crude. And so, you know, this dip that we've had overnight definitely has been triggered by all of the news that I've just been covering. Uh, and that being then is that, you know, if China are uncertain about their economic future, if they have then not issued a numerical target for GDP for this year, if that weakens market confidence about the type and size of response that they're going to do to in order to um, create stability in their economy, well then oil prices have got to come off. And particularly then in context of the, the, the sharp and steep acceleration in price that we've had basically over the course of the last several trading sessions. I mean, this is just looking at crude here, uh, looking at the July contract. You know, we, we broke out of that range bound trade that we were in generally speaking, 14th, 15th, and the price really has accelerated considerably. So, you know, a pullback of the nature of what we've seen. Quite interesting. Again, if stocks do come under some assault later, uh, then I guess potentially then it's really around this the 31 type level, which would encapsulate then uh, that kind of consolidation of price that we had over the course of the beginning of the week. Uh, and then if we were to break down below there, it could be quite interesting to see where we finish. Final thing, Bank of Japan did come out overnight. Um, they decided uh, in an emergency meeting to launch a new a lending facility that aims to channel more funds to small and medium-sized businesses suffering from obviously the, the economic blow from the, from the pandemic. Um, just looking at the Japanese yen though, if anything, it's moved in a counterintuitive way. Uh, this has been more uh, preemptive action from the bank to try and help um, offset the negative implications of what's going on, help boost the economy. Typically, you would think, well, this is akin to easing and shouldn't the yen weaken, but quite the opposite, the, the yen's actually strengthened in this case. Uh, I think it's being overrided and dominated by the general risk off sentiment across the other asset classes on these bigger macro stories. And if anything, uh, the Bank of Japan didn't change rates, it didn't change anything else, uh, perhaps that being a little bit of a disappointment for those that were looking for more easing type, more definitive action, and that didn't materialize. Um, Calendar-wise for today, what have we got? Um, UK retail sales is actually coming out, uh, or has come out um, since I've really started the briefing. Um, and just to, to quickly cover that, uh, the pound, let me just show you, as you can see, has really seen very little to no movement at all on the retail sale report and I would say that's absolutely warranted. That comes despite the fact that UK retail sales month to month came in at minus 18.1%. Uh, expectations were for minus 16%. These are April readings so we knew they were going to be bad. Uh, so it's, it's been very well uh, much priced in at this point. Um, other than that then we'll, we'll move to the ECB minutes. We'll get those just after midday. Uh, the U.S. session is particularly quiet, actually. There's no major U.S. economic data today. So all the more emphasis people might put on uh, the China-U.S. kind of growing confrontation, uh, you would say it's probably hard to go a session in the context of now and this news flow without Donald Trump saying something going into the weekend. Uh, it tends to be his general routine and practice he likes to give that kind of show of force just to finish off the week for markets. He, you know, he definitely knows what he's doing in regards to the timing side of things. So, yeah, I definitely keep an eye out for that. I'll share his full agenda. Uh, I'll tweet it from from my account later. All right, that is it. Let you guys get on. Uh, so again, well done and good luck for the final day for the guys on the pro course. Look forward to continuing your journey uh, with us for next week. Uh, if anyone else interested in getting more information on that, just go on the website, amplifytrading.com. Have a great weekend uh, and I'll see you next week. Thanks very much.